This is Lake Anna in Virginia. Apart from its beautiful cottage country environment, it's a place that you could pass through without a second thought. But something is happening here right now. Something that represents a massive shift in the way energy, power, and corporate control are evolving in the 21st century. Amazon, a company you might associate more with next day deliveries or endless movie recommendations, is making moves in a very different sector, nuclear energy. In a quiet but monumental deal, Amazon has bought up a nuclear reactor here in North Anna, Virginia. It's a head-turning development, yet it's not entirely surprising because Lake Anna is not alone. In recent years, tech companies have begun buying up nuclear reactors all across the world. Just days ago, Google announced it was buying and setting up nuclear reactors in California. Meanwhile, Microsoft followed suit with a reactor project on Three Mile Island, a site that notoriously shut down after a partial nuclear meltdown. And let's not forget about Larry Ellison's Oracle. Larry Ellison a few weeks ago said this on a strange earnings call. Let me say something that's going to sound truly bizarre. The location and the power place we've located, they've already got building permits for three nuclear reactors. These are the small modular nuclear reactors to power the data center. This is how crazy it's getting. This is what's going on. It's not just the odd deal here or there. These purchases are part of a growing trend. Tech giants are acquiring nuclear reactors as though they were grabbing prime real estate in Manhattan. So why is this happening? To understand, we do have to rewind a bit. The tech industry today isn't just about the gadgets in our pockets or the apps we use to navigate the world. It's built on immense, unseen networks of data centers, high-performance computing clusters, and increasingly, artificial intelligence. And all these systems, in turn, rely on one thing, energy. As AI grows, as the Internet of Things expands, as the cloud swells to accommodate the seemingly infinite appetite for data, these tech companies need more power than ever before. They need reliable, consistent, high output power. Solar? It's not enough. Wind? It's too fickle. Nuclear? Well, it's starting to look like the only thing that can scale up to meet these needs. Tech companies are buying nuclear reactors because they've recognized that the energy demands of the future are not just about quantity, but stability. No more blackouts, no more fluctuating energy markets, no more reliance on fossil fuels that are either too expensive or too unstable. Nuclear energy, long derided for its past issues, offers a modern solution to a very modern problem, keeping the internet and AI running 24-7 without fail. So a single nuclear reactor can produce between 500 and 1500 megawatts of electricity, enough to power around 400,000 to 1 million homes depending on the size of the reactor. By comparison, a large-scale data center might consume 300 megawatts or more annually, or the equivalent of about 250,000 homes. That is a small city worth of electricity. In 2022, global data centers consumed an estimated 350 terawatt hours of electricity, which is roughly 2% of the global electricity demand. Think about all the factories, the homes, the offices, the sports stadiums. 2% of all of the electricity in the entire world is now going to data centers. And that number could hit 10% by the end of the decade. And one thing that I found quite astounding was the amount of energy consumed when trying to generate AI-based code, images, videos, and just from chatbots in general. For example, one AI image generation can either be fairly efficient and barely take up any electricity, or some very highly powered AI generation models can use the equivalent of a full charge of a smartphone for one image. Think about that. It also estimates that some AI video models, not images, videos, can use about the same amount of electricity as running a microwave for one to four hours. Again, this is highly variable depending on the model used to make the video. 
In fact, the power demand of this new wave of AI is getting so large that it is already starting to affect the power grids around the world. And keep in mind, this wave is just starting. One example is Meta opening up a new AI data center in Kansas City. However, Kansas City was planning on closing one of its coal power plants in 2023, but the city was forced to stop its closure due to the surge in energy demand from Meta and its data center. And there's over 12 other coal power plants all around the United States that were supposed to close, but are forced to remain open to accommodate new data centers. This surge in energy demand is getting so crazy that by 2040, data centers based around AI may surpass the total energy usage of homes in the United States. Now, imagine this. There will come a moment, not far from now, when the energy demands of artificial intelligence will eclipse that of all of humanity. A world where machines, once bound by our whims, now consume more power than the sum of human civilization's efforts. And their silent calculations, their endless creativity, they will draw from the very sources that fuel stars, demanding not just data, but energy, vast and unceasing, to power their dreams. It's no longer just about code or silicon. It's a philosophical reckoning where the future belongs not only to us, but to the intelligence that we've set free. Now, there's also some very big and apparent key issues that are on the horizon from this as well. One big one that no one is really talking about is how electrical grids in some cities are getting, well, old. I mean, a lot of these electrical grids were built when they only had to accommodate a house that would have a fridge and maybe some lights and a small television. The aging electrical grid, once the lifeblood of our cities and industries, is straining under the weight of a digital world. It was built for a simpler time, a time before data centers devoured power at unimaginable rates and before AI systems like ChatGPT demanded energy beyond our comprehension. Now, another issue is also surprisingly water. In the not so distant future, the rise of AI will challenge not just our minds, but our planet's most fundamental resources. By 2027, generative AI data centers will require an astonishing 4.2 to 6.6 .6 billion cubic meters of water just to keep themselves cool. That figure is staggering. It surpasses the total annual water withdrawal of half of the United Kingdom. While the world fixates on AI's hunger for energy, few consider the resource even more critical than power, and that is water. Water is the hidden, limiting factor that will define how much AI can grow in the years to come. To put this into perspective, for every 10 to 50 queries you make on ChatGPT, Every string of text that seemingly materializes out of thin air burns through the equivalent of about 16 ounces of water. It's a cost that you never see, vaporized in the cooling systems of the vast data centers that power our digital age. Much of this water is just lost to evaporation, a process that keeps these server farms from overheating. But not all hope is lost because in Santa Clara, California, there is a data center that has found an alternative, which is cooling its data center without water. They have an enormous air conditioning unit, which brings in cool air, keeping the data flowing without draining the vital resource. Other companies like Apple, Samsung, and Qualcomm have pursued a different path, bringing AI to the devices themselves, away from the power-hungry data centers. This way, your phone or computer processes the queries locally, easing the burden on the cloud and sparing those vast oceans of water. As AI expands, one thing becomes clear. We will have as much AI as the world's data centers can support. It may be less than we aspire to, tempered by the constraints of power grids, cooling systems, and water, but in the background, a race is on. A race to unshackle AI from these resource bottlenecks and ensure the future we dream of isn't choked by the very elements that sustain humanity. But there's also larger implications that we kind of touched on. I mean, what does this mean for a world where a handful of corporations not only dominate the digital sphere, but now also control the energy grids and the water supply? I mean, the consolidation of energy resources and water into the hands of just a few players sounds a little bit uh, dystopian. 
Now saying that, there could also be some positives. If tech companies with their massive resources and capacity for innovation can help reinvigorate the nuclear technology sector, it could actually accelerate the global shift away from fossil fuels. In some ways, it could be a step towards decarbonizing the world's energy grid. Also, because private companies are known for trying to pinch every single penny, maybe the future data centers won't use water, or maybe they will do what Microsoft has already done, which is build these data centers underneath the ocean itself to cool it off naturally. I mean, we already have companies like NVIDIA that are producing chips exclusively for the purpose of AI, and NVIDIA has promised that some of their chips can reduce AI's power consumption by well over 90%. Looking ahead, we can imagine a world where nuclear-powered data centers hum quietly in the background, fueling AI systems that run everything from self-driving cars to personalized medical care. But that vision of the future comes with a few strings attached. As AI advances, its insatiable hunger for energy will grow, forcing the tech giants to innovate even further in their energy acquisitions. We may see companies investing not just in nuclear, but in fusion power, geothermal, or other advanced technologies. And they'll do this not just for their own survival, but because in this future, energy is survival. So the fact that Amazon is buying a nuclear reactor in North Anna, Virginia, is just a sign that this is the tip of the iceberg. We are witnessing the birth of a new era one where the masters of the digital world become the masters of the physical world of energy. Whether this is a future we should welcome or fear is still up for debate. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.